Good morning. How is everybody? Hello, are you there? Are you there? Sorry, <laughs> I just opened the door of the kitchen. Uh, we have a technical problem. Uh, I hope you're okay there. Uh, let me show you the sunrise as it's coming. Uh, the technical problem is that the wife, the Facebook is refusing to go live on data. I was always doing it on 4D. And that's how I could walk even up there on Mount Arbel. But I tried three times this morning to do it with data and it refuses the connection. It says internet is not working. And I don't know why that is the case. So I'm probably going to have to stay here real close so that I don't lose the Wi-Fi connection in order to have a connection with you. So let's do that today. We're going to stay here really, uh, really close to home base to keep the connection. It's another little trial. Yesterday, in this regard, there was and it, I attempted to do it inside in the, at Mary Magdalene Chapel to begin because of the, the related gospel passage, not directly to Mary Magdalene, but about the theme there. And then it stopped broadcasting. Um, I couldn't uh, get it going and I don't know what was the cause. So I did a new video. <laughs> And I, when I walked out at Duke and Atom, I actually even deleted what I had recorded. That was my intention, and I pressed that button. But I couldn't believe my eyes when a half an hour later, after I had finished doing substitute filming in the Instagram uh, post, I found that the post was actually online and published. So I left it there, but I also put up the other post, which was very nice, and then uh, verbally more complete in the on the um, uh, on the on the YouTube so if you want to see the other post I did yesterday it's on the YouTube and it's also on the Magdala Facebook page where I also post each day um, the one we have here on my Facebook page so that's just a little bit of the travail yesterday trying to get and I couldn't do the live stream on Instagram either, so I also did the post there. I'm not sure how Instagram is going to work out today. I'm just wandering a few steps over here. I hope I don't lose the Wi-Fi connection. If I do, I'll just back into it again, just to get a little movement in it to fake a stroll. And the first thing I wanted to be talking about this morning and not was about technical difficulties was a big congratulation to all the women on Women's Day and the amazing gift you are. And then I just swing over here to Duke and Alton where we have that uh, inscription over the dome uh, inside Duke and Alton, which says in this holy place, the church gives thanks to the most holy Trinity for the feminine genius for every woman for their eternal dignity and for the marvels God has accomplished through women throughout history. So today when uh, a lot of world focuses on the theme of women, as believers we want to also make that a prayer-filled theme and a deep act of gratitude to our Creator for creating humanity as He did as Genesis says, male and free, female, he created them. And there are many statements inside the book of Genesis and inside the creation account, which show the, the both are in the image and likeness of God. And maybe even their union 
is in the image and likeness of God in the sense that God is Trinity as we Christians have finally recognized through revelation. And as such, there's an extraordinary unity which far transcends all the possible unities we have in a material world, uh, separated as we are by time and space uh, from from each other and from and and just the material limitations and in God those that dilution if you will is not present so there's an extraordinary unity in God and then the union of husband and wife in that sense is also in the image of God so I'm not sure if the Wi-Fi is telling me that there's a struggle here so I have to stay close good so again uh, interesting on that theme as well really the readings are very much there because it's amazing you know the core stuff in life <laughs> I had a crazy thought this morning I was just thinking what would happen if this Holy Week were my last Holy Week <laughs> in this world and how do I know it will not be I don't want to give you any tetric thoughts. It's not about that. But it's about the very fact that each day is done when it's done. And each week is done when it's done. Done. Over. I can't do much about yesterday. I could apologize if I did something wrong. I can be thankful in my prayer. But yesterday's gone. The decisions I made yesterday, I made them, they're gone. I could try to undo them and say, okay, let's go back on that contract, let's go back on that deal, let's go back on, uh, especially if I said words that were unkind, to ask forgiveness, to make amends. But what I did, I did. It's done. So how am I going to live this Holy Week? It was a thought that came to my mind, a kind of a wild thought that came across my mind. I want to live it very well. And, you know, the Word of God is so powerful and so beautiful. And the way it's served up to us in the liturgy is also very wise and renewing. So the, the liturgy has this cycle to it, you know. Just like now we're two weeks away from the spring solstice, the spring equinox. So... In two weeks, we'll be there, 21st of March. So then, uh, nature has its cycles. It has its winters and its summers. And it has its darkest periods. And now the six months, basically almost the six months of the darkest six months of the year are behind us in the Northern Hemisphere. And the Southern Hemisphere is heading into them. So... For those of you who joined late, we're staying fixed here in a spot because I'm tied to internet, just as a little uh, side note. I have to stay here within the reach of the Wi-Fi as it wouldn't uh, transmit on data. So how many Holy Weeks are you going to have in your life? How many Easter's are you going to celebrate? We don't know. So I'd like to do this one really well. <laughs> I'd like to do it really well. And the liturgy has helped me with very powerful readings. And just pondering on the book of Hosea today, the first reading from the very conclusion of the book of Hosea. You know, the conclusion of a book is very important. And you kind of should connect to the beginning of the book as well. And Hosea is an incredible, like a swing, you know, the swing you go, you go up and down, over and back, over and back, over and back, and you're going up and going down and up and down and up and down and up and down and up, you know. And it's swinging between major, major, major emotions and passions and between the wickedness of humanity and the wickedness of people chosen for love of God and they pray that all the time, and we inherit that prayer to, to love God. You know, um, hear Israel, the Lord your God is Lord alone, our first commandment. You know, 
and we turn away and the book of Hosea talks a lot about idolatry, about infidelity, about prostitution. And poor Hosea, you know, he must have had a rough time in his village because God said to him, go and marry that prostitute. And they have three children. The names are very significant. And then he says, um, uh, then the, she, she leaves him again, goes off. And then he goes, and God says, go back and buy her back. And he pays her for so many shekels. Just check out the, the reading there. Uh, that's at the beginning of, uh, just in the, in, the, in the course of the book, you know. So then he's living in his own person. The tension of the family life, the humiliation, the shame. And yet he's carrying out God's orders to be faithful to this wife and to, to build a home in that circumstance with the children. So this is very, very uh, dramatic for Hosea personally, but it also becomes an incredible metaphor for the relationship between God and his people. That's a, a marriage metaphor. And this part of the chapter, the, as they read the end of the book of Hosea, it's always the prophets, even though if they have to speak very tough words, they always come to a great uh, point of consolation. And the text we have today is all consolation. Return, O Israel, to the Lord your God. You have collapsed through your guilt. Collapsed. Take with you words and return to the Lord. Say to him, bring words, prepare your prayer. You know, that's, we're on the pilgrimage of prayer. Kathleen did a marvelous job yesterday. I didn't, well, obviously her one today is not out yet. It's coming out in half an hour. Turn with your, take with you words. Prepare your prayers, prepare your prayers. And that's what we do also reading scripture because God is speaking to us through scripture and we respond, that's prayer. This pilgrimage of prayer, you know, virtual pilgrimage of prayer here in the Holy Land that you're all able to follow. And say to God, forgive our all iniquity and receive what is good. We want to give you the best of our hearts. And this is the gospel, you know, to love God with all our heart and all our soul and all our strength. This is the question today. What is the greatest commandment? Say to him, forgive all iniquity. And our world today has lots of iniquity, lots of substance abuse, human trafficking, pleasure indulgence that are not given to, to us. Uh, they have their own context and their own proper place. Uh, pride, arrogance, the human trafficking, you know? How, how can we love God if each person is his image and we traffic human beings and we exploit them? Impossible, you know, this is, can't work. This can't work. And humanity needs a renewal. And this is the point of Lent. This is why the liturgy is so wonderful, because the liturgy is a structured way of uh, returning in a rhythmic way to the sources of our life. And, you know, we received the reading of the, those two great commandments to love God with all our heart and all our soul. Uh, with quite some frequency through the through the year. It shows up in the Sunday Gospels occasionally. It shows up in the weekday Gospels as we go through the different synoptics. We're going to meet it. And some people say, ah, you hear the same thing all over again. But that's the core of our life. It's like having breakfast and, and, and dinner. You know, it's uh, without these meals of spiritual nourishment, we grow weak. And the key, 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 element is to love God with all our heart and all our soul and all our strength. The Lord alone, not the fashions, not the political ideologies, not the party in power, good or bad, not this or not that, not money and stock, new investments, new exploration, new technologies. It's God. This is the, the power of the readings today. And then the words of the prophet today, I will heal their defection. So he sees our sins not so much as a crime, but as a disease, because he will heal it. The, the diseased 
something diseased about our mind, about our will, about our, our blindness. You know, he heals the deaf, the deaf who can't hear God's word, our deafness. And these miracles, you know, happen also around here in Jerusalem. And Israel will blossom like a lily, strike root like the Lebanon cedar, put forth its shoots. Splendor shall be like the olive tree, some beautiful olive trees over here. There you have a beautiful olive tree. That one with the, a number of them. You know, we have it in the palm trees. Splendor like the olive tree. You know, I never saw an olive tree in that sense as splendorous, you know. I, the, it's, it's funny, you know, some trees have an elegance, the height or something grow up there. The olive tree, I don't know what it is about the olive tree that really impresses me. The aged olive trees, the togetherness of the olive tree. Uh, and fragrance like the Lebanon cedar. Now, I'm not familiar with the fragrance of Lebanon cedar, but the boat altar here in Ducanaltum is made of Lebanese cedar. I don't know if we can get a glimpse of it from here. You know, I'm tied down here by restrictions of movement because of Wi-Fi. That's how we're here this morning. We have to find out what the cause of that is. Why it won't live stream on data like it always has done. Again, the people will dwell in the shade of the Lebanon cedar. And you know, in a, in a country of extreme temperatures, the Lebanon cedar is, would be a tremendous blessing, you know. Ephraim, that's like the northern kingdom of Israel, represented by one of the tribes because that's the only one that was left after the Assyrians did their damage. We're talking about the 8th century, the time of Hosea. What more has he to do with idols? I have humbled him, but I will prosper him. I will prosper him like a verdant cypress tree. Because of me, you bear fruit. And then the, the, those words, the concluding words, let him who is wise understand these things. Wonderful, absolutely wonderful. And so to love God with all our hearts and our neighbor as ourselves. And today, obviously, there's a special, our neighbor, especially today, the focus, like on a birthday, the focus on a birthday child, and today the world has a focus on women. So we, here in Magdala, we have special prayer for women today. It was also a special activity a couple of days ago. The women did some cooking here together, the, all the, the, the different women involved in Magdala. And uh, I invite you to pray and to, to do something special, to do something kind, something nice, something uh, appreciative. May the Lord bless you and keep you, and see you later, alligators. And thanks be to God we were able to go live today. <laughs> Uh, God bless you all.